So a vampire story set in a prison. I imagine this isn't this is a story you just had to tell. Yeah, well, I mean, it was important. No one's ever done a, a vampire story in a prison, I don't believe. So we're the first people, and we made it funny. So. I think, you know, a funny film about vampires in a prison. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. No it's, it's like, yeah. Like prison Break meets True Blood, but yeah. it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Not as romantic as well, I'd like to add, yeah. yeah nobody fucks anybody in it. Or, basically, uh, vampire. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> Not unless behind the scenes, different story. It's like an orgy <laughs> in there. It's awful. Yeah, it's a right mess. It was a prison orgy. It was a prison it was, orgy. It was a prison orgy, yeah. 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 Talking about prisons, you actually got to... You want to talk about prison orgies for? I'm, I'm sure joking. there's plenty. I'm joking. <laughs> you about the location because you did actually film in a real prison didn't yeah. you yeah we we found a prison called uh, hmp kingston which was this year's prison it's been on all these tv shows as the most haunted prison in england so we went if we're doing a comedy horror let's find a haunted prison so yeah. it wasn't far from where christian lived so he could walk to work every day which was a bonus <laughs> that's the only reason i took the judge. Like, if i walk to work i'm in that's it yeah and i imagine it helps as well for your actors because they're in the location and and they can actually react to um, to, to where they are yeah, so basically, wherever you put a scene, you've got everything behind you. You turn that way, you've got the bar. So it's really great. There was no, like, I mean, you can't move sets, you can't move walls. They're, like, six six feet thick. But, um, yeah, everywhere you go, you've got something great to point a camera at. So you're kind of spoiled for choice in that respect. And I imagine as well that you're going to have lots of blood and guts. It's a horror film. So prosthetics-wise, did you go as practically as you could to, to make the... the we, we, got, we got some tomato ketchup from... There's a local wimp in Portsmouth, yeah, isn't there? Luckily, and we just yeah. sprayed people with the tomato. It looked quite convincing, I thought. I think it works. No, I don't know. Anyone, no. But no, there's a, lot, there's a lot... We did practical effects as much as we could. Um, little uh, and enhanced CG here and there. But yeah. Visual effects were good, though, weren't they? they? Yeah, they, they were. They well, looked, they. I mean, when you watch the film, you'll go... I mean, it, it definitely looks big budget. It doesn't look like we've made it on a low budget. I Which think. we didn't. We didn't make it low budget for a big I budget. We made it for 10 million. Yeah, that's yeah we did. Yeah, so I mean, it's big budget. Definitely. But low budget as in it wasn't 100 million. That's what I was yeah. referring to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we, you know, the, the things have changed a lot in film over the last sort of few years. Is it is it as easy to find financing for films? Because obviously there'll be people watching that want to, to make their own film. No, it's really hard. But, you know, um, I'm, I'm uh, what, what do you call it? I'm one of them people that just keeps knocking, just keep knocking on doors, and I'm actually a professional beggar now as a producer. So <laughs> I go around with a thing saying, like, I've got this really good idea for a movie. Can I have some money, please? And you know, every time I get an arm closer to a yes. So I think you just have to be positive, and whatever you can get, that's what you have to work with. So if you can raise ten grand, make your film for ten grand. If you can get a hundred grand, make it for hundred grand. Get a million, make it for a million. But I think you know. Whatever, you have to cut your cloth accordingly, you know. And we're very lucky on this. As I said, we had, we had an amazing special effects makeup woman called Emma Croft. We've had a, we had we had amazing actors, and everybody just got got involved. And everyone, I mean, we, it was like a little family. We was all in a hotel there, and we kind of rolled out the hotel, done the filming, come back. Everyone's in the bar getting drunk. You know, it was probably an actor's paradise, wasn't it? It's almost <laughs> like we did time together. It's, it was a little bit like that. We we went in for a month and just went to prison together. But we were allowed out at the end of every day, yeah. We were right in, yeah, very method. Just going back briefly with regards to kind of having a limited budget to work with, do you think as a filmmaker it gives you more creativity because you can't just chuck money at it, it, it forces you to be... It doesn't matter what budget he has, he always wants more. Yeah. So he goes, can't we have a bit more? Can't we have this? Can't we, have, can't we blow up the prison? No, we can't. So, you know, as a director, I think you always want the best. So what, if, you, if, if you say that's what we got, he'll always go, I want more because he, he wants the best for his film, so... You know, which we understand and we love. That's, That's kind of spot on. Yeah, you always, yeah, exactly. You just want to keep pushing. Uh, there's a few times where it's like, it's really about time is your biggest battle. You just haven't got time. So as I say, Richard, take have an extra day. No, you've got that. So sometimes you have to find a little way around it. But I must admit, there's a few times whereby probably cutting it short as we did is quite effective. So yeah, it's a, it's a good lean, fast, for, you know, movie. We, we shot lean uh, and we sort of, you know, rattled through it very quickly.